Sometimes the best hiding places can be found right out in the open. It's almost like they're hidden in plain sight. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm Dan Corcoran, and this is Hidden in Plain Sight. It's a collection of some of the stories that got a lot of attention from a lot of people over the last year. We're coming to you from inside the historic Sterling Opera House in downtown Derby. Very rarely is anyone in here, at least not lately. This place opened in 1889 and closed in 1965. From outside on Elizabeth Street, you can see there's been some upkeep over the years, but the toll time has taken is clear inside. The sweeping balconies, keystone arches, and intricate wrought ironwork, almost like a time capsule. And now we're cracking that time capsule open. Much more of the Sterling Opera House story ahead. Over the last year, I've learned that not everything around Connecticut is as it seems. Our state holds some secrets, which we'll be revealing for you starting now. Like this waterway that's deep underground, one of our state's biggest cities. Where does it lead and why is it buried? We'll take a deeper look straight ahead. Also, the deceiving dimensions of a really unique house in Hartford that you just wouldn't see until you get up close. So we're taking you there. Plus, Connecticut's roads to nowhere, from abandoned projects to secret streets to the hidden places you drive by every day. We're taking you on a ride to remember. And you've probably taken a ride by this giant cross high above Interstate 84 in Waterbury. Not everybody knows what else is up there, right next to thousands of commuters every day. We're gonna show you coming up. But we're gonna start with some history that's buried deep under our capital city. You can see some of it if you know where to look. Right there, tucked between Hartford's Pope Park and busy Interstate 84, is one of the few spots where you can spot some hidden history. I think most people probably do not realize that it's underneath us. Drone Ranger, high above the Park River. If you haven't heard of it, maybe it's because you can't always see it. This waterway flows underground, under the capital city for more than two miles. But I think it's really cool that we have an underground river. The Park River was buried back in the 1940s by the Army Corps of Engineers as a way to prevent springtime flooding and divert polluted runoff. This subterranean waterway flows beneath the grounds of the capital, then Bushnell Park, before it sees the light of day again, dumping into the Connecticut River. Back above ground, we're going to go back in time to show you some hidden military might that some people may not realize is right in their own backyard. Drone Ranger now zooms south to just off Route 372 in Cromwell. Right next to a condo complex is what's left of a Cold War relic, a missile site. The U.S. Army built hundreds of these line-of-sight anti-aircraft missile systems across the country in the 1950s, a dozen of them in Connecticut. It's overgrown, but you can still make out a few of the original buildings and the circular radar platforms that have stood the test of time. It's nice to live next to it, but uh, it's also nice to know that we don't need places like this anymore. This missile site and many of the others like it were deactivated in the late 60s. We are showing you what can be hidden in plain sight right under your nose, or in this next case, in the Elm City, right under your feet. Next, we fly down I-91 to the heart of the Elm City, the New Haven Green, an open space, a gathering place for demonstrations, concerts, the tree lighting. But underneath all that is a morbid marvel. This green was once a cemetery, the final resting place for thousands and thousands of people. I think that kind of weirds me out a little. <laughs> In the early 1800s, all of the headstones were removed from the green, but the bodies were not. Since then, layers of soil were added over the remains buried underfoot. I think your everyday person is not gonna, you know, think about that. And if you didn't know about the green's history, now you do. Let's move on now to another community, to something really high tech and hidden in plain sight. Take a look. 
on now to the busy intersection of South Main Street and Park Road in West Hartford in what appears to be a house. Well, I'm sure they intentionally made it look like a residence. Despite the seemingly typical brick exterior, black shutters and white window panes, nobody's living here. Why? It's not a home. The town decided to purchase the property more than a decade ago to create a bunker-like facility for important town technology. It's secure, it's outfitted with backup generators, and it can withstand extreme weather. Not everyone passing by knows what's really inside until now. If they think anything, they probably just figure it's a house. We pick up with a look at a unique house in Hartford that's certainly not as it seems until you take the time to take a closer look. Now, we're taking you there. Scarborough Street in Hartford. It is home to a really unique home. Maybe you've seen it from the street, a large green lawn leading up to what appears to be a large white and gray house. When you're out on the street, it looks one way, <laughs> And then you get up close to it and you see something totally different. Yeah. Brandy Culp from the Wadsworth Athenaeum Museum of Art helps us explore what's hidden in plain sight. Built in the 1930s by Chick Austin, a former director of the Wadsworth and his wife. Chick wanted his house to look like this photo that he took of a grand villa in Italy, except he did it here on a very different scale. So Chick has a great quote. He said, my house is like me. It's all facade. While it looks to passerby like a massive home, the Austin house isn't. The dimensions of this house are pretty incredible. It's 86 feet long, but just 18 feet deep. It's almost like it's an optical illusion if you're out there driving by on the street. The realistic picture is this very small dwelling house that is only one room wide and approximately four rooms long. So come on in. Walking in the door, you get a sense of the true size of the structure, certainly not as large as the exterior would have you think. It's jewel-like on the interior, and it's a surprise when you walk in the door. Baroque style, with silk-covered walls, gilded and painted furniture. Upstairs, the bedroom and a dressing room with an unexpected modern feel. The Wadsworth now offers tours through these spaces, exposing big misconceptions about this not-so-big house. There's this gasp and a, and a wow, because it, it is so special and unique. And right now on the NBC Connecticut app, check out an interactive 360 degree tour where you can click and explore your own way through the Austin House. We're taking you along to explore some of Connecticut's hidden highways, secret streets, and roads to nowhere. Exclusive access to places you've probably seen from a distance, but never quite like this. It towers over I-84 in Farmington. You can't miss it, but it's tough to see all of this multi-stack highway interchange until right now. This mega transportation project dates back to the 1960s, but it was never completed. Much of it is overgrown, tagged with graffiti, never used by vehicles. There's something they were gonna do that they didn't do. Transportation historian Richard DeLuca says these unused ramps were supposed to be for the I-291 Beltway, which was planned to run around the city of Hartford through MDC reservoir lands in West Hartford. Public opinion in Connecticut sort of took its stand. Potential environmental impacts and the projected cost kept plans from fully coming to fruition. Decades later, only the ramps leading to and from Route 9 are carrying cars. The rest of this four-level stack is something to look at, but not drive on. Now we head southeast to Salem, to the abrupt end of Route 11. This state highway was actually supposed to be a lot longer than it is, which is why some people refer to Route 11 as Route 5 and a half. The project was supposed to create a straight shot from Colchester all the way down to I-95 in Waterford. These two bridges are a sign of a project that was never completed. 
drivers have never had a chance to make their way across these things, and they probably never will, because beyond this point is a whole lot of nothing. You can see the two huge cuts in the earth, where construction for Route 11 was underway in the early 1970s. Since then, attempts to lengthen this highway haven't gone anywhere. From those unfinished highway projects to an entire street with three dozen homes wiped off the map in North Haven. Old family footage shows how alive this neighborhood once was. The history of Banton Street is, you know, extremely unique. Tucked away in the woods behind a rest stop on the Wilbercross Parkway is what used to be Banton Street. Holly LaPrade's dad and grandparents grew up here until they and their neighbors were told they needed to get out. Banton Street, constructed in the 1920s, right along the Quinnipiac River, was prone to flooding, and with upstream development, it just got worse. When the flood waters came up too high, it was flooding into their homes. It became too dangerous to stay. By the 70s, the state bought out all of the residents and removed the buildings. Foundations and fences falling apart are all that's left in what eventually became Quinnipiac River State Park. Holly's family has moved on but they've honored the past with the name of the family business. A piece of my family history that, you know, I take a lot of pride in. And check out the app. We posted a gallery of all these roads to nowhere so you can take a closer look. We've all seen it, that giant cross high above Interstate 84 in Waterbury. But not everybody knows what else is up there, right next to thousands of commuters each and every day. Right now, we show you. It can be seen from miles away in Waterbury's night sky. A glowing cross, 56 feet tall, high above the highway. To some, a symbol of faith and a sign of what's to come. High atop Pine Hill is what's left of Holy Land USA, an 18-acre religious theme park opened in 1955 by local lawyer John Greco. Inspired by selected passages from the Bible, the property consisted of a chapel, stations of the cross, and replicas of catacombs and little Middle Eastern-style villages dotting the hillside. And have a place of reflection for people to at least try to understand uh, the dynamics and the gravity of, of what it was over there. In the 50s and 60s, thousands of people visited these grounds each year, including Chuck Pagano. It was a special place for me. A lot of visitors came up, and it was definitely in a different sort of build at that point. Pagano, who's now chairman of the Holy Land Board of Directors, says so many people see that large cross, but not enough know the history that's right beneath it. I think the cross um, probably lights the wick of curiosity for some people. The park closed to the public in 1984 for renovations and never fully reopened. And over the years, behind locked gates and no trespassing signs, decay and disrepair, vandalism and even violence. I like to be approaching what it was when I was younger as a reflection point. Uh, we'll see if we get there. Hidden in plain sight for years, but there are hopes and prayers this place will soon rise from ruin. We've posted a gallery of some historic Holy Land photos. You can check them out on the NBC Connecticut app. Just search hidden in plain sight. Many of these hidden in plain sight stories came from ideas from you. If there are other spots in our state that you want to explore, share your ideas with me when you visit the special Hidden in Plain Sight section of the NBC Connecticut app. Finally, a closer look at where we are right now and why we're here. This is the hauntingly beautiful Sterling Opera House in downtown Derby, finely crafted and built in 1889. It was named after Charles Sterling, the renowned piano maker, the outside looks pretty well maintained. The inside needs some TLC. The acoustics in here were amazing and still are. Many well-known figures graced this stage over the years. Harry Houdini, Amelia Earhart, Bob Hope, Bing Crosby, countless plays and musical performances too. The Sterling Opera House was the first structure in Connecticut to be listed on the National Register of Historic Places. It operated as a theater until 1945, when its lower levels were then used as Derby City Hall, the police station, and jail. 
The rusted out jail cells are still here, but none of this has been used since the building was abandoned in 1965. It's been closed off to the public ever since. Despite the cracked windows, peeling paint, and a whole lot of other repairs needed, there has been talk of bringing this place back to its original glory. The city says it's open to finding a private party interested in helping to finance the restoration of the theater. But until that happens, the history here will stay tucked away, hidden in plain sight. Check out the NBC Connecticut app for more exclusive photos and video of this incredible theater. There's still so much more out there for us to discover and uncover. I'm Dan Corcoran. Thank you for joining me to reveal some of what's hidden in plain sight around us.